Amen. So the test here is how long can Scott sit on that stool? And that's how long I have. <laughs> what did you expect when you came to this building this morning? What? I, I'm old and deaf. Yeah, you can't cheat and use what they said last service. That's cheating. <laughs> Did you expect to hear cool in the game? Honestly, probably not. I heard grace. Who said that? Did someone say grace or did I just make that up? You said what? Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> we all came here with some kind of expectation this morning. You expected something to happen in a particular way. Whether you, whether you know that or not, you came here this morning expecting something. You came here this morning expecting to hear that Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Right? I said it backwards. You're not supposed to say it. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. You expected to hear me say that several times. You expected to hear me say hallelujah. You expected the pastor to tell you that Christ rose from the tomb, that the tomb couldn't hold him, and that everything is said and done. But you know what? I'm not going to tell you that. It's okay. I will straighten it all around here in just a second. I promise. Yes, I will tell you that Jesus died on that cross on Good Friday. He went to the cross. And he died. He poured out His love over all of creation. He poured out His love over you. Whether or not that person sitting next to you would have been here or not, Christ still would have went to that cross and died just as He did. And He descended into hell. Right? We'll, we'll proclaim that here in a few minutes during the baptism. Right? We'll proclaim that Christ died and He descended into the dead. Or He descended into hell. He went to redeem those who had gone before. He went into the tomb. And this morning He woke up and He came out of the tomb. And if you read God, John's Gospel, parents you'll thank me for this later. If you read John's gospel, it said that when John, the disciple that Jesus loved and Peter got to the tomb, they went inside and they found Jesus's cloth, his burial cloth, and it was folded up neatly on his bed. So even if you're going to rise from the dead, you still should have time to make your bed. <laughs> and it rhymes. So therefore, all of this is true. <laughs> right? He rose from the dead. The tomb couldn't hold him. But that's not the end. Easter is not the end of the story. See, it's not about Jesus rising from the grave. As good as that is, that's not where God wants to be finished with it. It's not where God needs to be finished with it. Because this story is more than that. Right? What did you expect to happen this morning? That we would encounter a risen Christ. We would encounter a God that went to the cross and died for each and every one of us. We would encounter a God who went into the tomb and stayed there for three days and then came back. We would encounter the angels that came to the tomb, right? Because Mary... Magdalene and Mary went to the tomb this morning in our reading and they expected to find that stone right there in front of it, right? Because they went to the tomb to see it, right? They went to, it says in the, it says in our reading that they went to the tomb to see it. If you listened, if you could hear the words to Alleluia. It said that they, they took spices because they were going to the they were going to see him to anoint his body with spices, right? But it, what I know they're printed in the bulletin. I know, 
I'm the one who put them there. <laughs> Actually, I gave them to Carrie, and Carrie is the one that put them there. So I didn't do anything. She, did, she does it all. So It says that they took spices. Matthew doesn't say anything about spices. It says that Mary Magdalene and Mary were going to the tomb. They expected that that tomb was going to be shut. They expected that big brock was still going to be in front of it. But as they were going, the earth started to shake. And when the earth shakes in Matthew, that means God is up to something and something's going to happen. The earth shook, the angel came down and he rolled back that stone and he sat upon it like Scott sitting on this stool over here. An angel from God. <laughs> and the angel said... <laughs> and the angel said... Do not be afraid. And why did the angel say this? He's probably not very good to look at, actually. If you read the Old Testament, right? We think of angels, right? You think of angels, you think of these big flowing wings and these beautiful flowing gowns. And they probably got, you know, and, and they can sing well. And right, they look, they're good to look at, right? Angels are, you know, they're not... This, this, yes, no. If you read the Old Testament, though, you'll find out that angels are probably pretty hideous looking. They have multiple sets of wings and multiple sets of eyes and heads and things like that. It's, so they probably said, don't be... And I didn't mean that, Scott. So. <laughs> if it, you know, they said, do not be afraid because they didn't look like something that would be joyful. They instilled fear in you. But still, isn't there enough in this world today to be afraid of? And isn't there enough happening in the world today that we can be afraid of what's going to happen? Just as the women got to the tomb and they were told not to be afraid, but when the angel told them to go and tell the disciples, they left the tomb in what? There's two words it says in your reading this morning. They left the tomb that morning in fear and in not just joy. Great joy. They were afraid of what was going to happen, but they were filled with joy over what they just experienced. They saw that angel sitting on that rock and the angel told them that Jesus wasn't here. He's now alive and you need to go and tell the disciples because Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. They were filled with fear of what was going on because they couldn't understand it. They couldn't comprehend the fact that everything that Jesus had told them for the last three years was absolutely 100% true. That everything that God had proclaimed in the Old Testament was 100% absolutely true. That everything that Jesus had told them was going to come to fruition. And they were afraid. But they were joy filled. With great joy. And they ran to tell the disciples... And as they went, they ran into Jesus. And Jesus, I missed this first part at the last service. And Jesus said to them, greetings, y'all. Right? He said greetings to them. But then he said, Jesus said to the women as they grabbed hold of his feet and they worshipped him. What did, they, what did Jesus say to them? Do not be afraid. The second time they've heard this. Don't be afraid. But go and tell my brothers to come and meet me on the mountain. Right? Because a little bit later on here in the 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, we hear Jesus meeting with his disciples in Galilee. And we'll hear this story at the end of Easter season. Where Jesus meets his disciples and they worship him and they doubt and they fear what's going on. And Jesus says to them, go into all of the world. And baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them everything that I've taught you. Go into the world and show them my love. Go into the world and teach them what I've taught you. Go into the world and tell them how much I love you and I love them. That's why Easter is not the end. 
Easter's not the end. It's not complete yet. You might say to me, well, pastor, when Jesus was on the cross on Good Friday, <coughs> he said in a loud voice, right? The last thing he did is he looked up to heaven and he said, oh, you can, I said a loud voice. He is in it. Who did that? Somehow I don't picture Jesus sounding. It is finished. <laughs> it is finished. Okay, if it's finished, what does that mean? What does that mean? He died. He did die. That's yeah. But what does what does what's finished though? Just Jesus? You know the answer. You're not allowed to answer. Right? What does that mean? Because on Good Friday, Jesus said, it's done. It's over. It's finished. And then he died. And Mary Magdalene and Mary expected that rock to still be there because he's supposed to be dead. But he's not. He's alive. And when Jesus said it's finished on the cross, basically what he was saying was, Daddy, death doesn't matter anymore. I took care of it for him. Because you know what? Being a Christian doesn't mean that you're not going to die a physical death. Being a Christian does not mean that you're not going to have troubles in your life. Being a follower of Christ does not mean that everything's going to be perfect for you. Jesus doesn't come and take away all of the other stuff that's going on out there. But Jesus steps into our world. Jesus stepped out of the tomb and into your world to say, no matter what happens, I've taken care of death and I've given you relationship with my father and your father. I've given you the package that will get you into heaven. I've given you the substance that's going to allow you to always have me with you. I've given you everything you could ever possibly need. In rising from the dead and finishing it on the cross because physical death no longer matters. That's why we can live in fear and still have great joy because it's all been taken care of. But that's why Easter's not the end because God needs you just as He told His disciples, just as He told the women, the women, Mary Magdalene and Mary, right? Go and tell my brothers. Go and tell my brothers. Go into the world and tell everyone how much I love you. Go into the world and tell them how much I love them. Go into the world and tell them everything that I've done for you and everything that I've done for them. Because I need you to go and to tell them, to teach them, to baptize them. To help them see the love that I have for all of my creation. So Easter's not the end. Easter's merely a beginning. Jesus stepping out of that tomb is your empowerment to go. And he tells you just as he told them. Go. Go and tell my brothers. Hallelujah. Christ is risen.